The concept of God in the Digimon Digital Universe has always been a very touchy and sensitive topic that made me a bit reluctant to approach. I didn't feel I knew enough about it and I didn't feel I had enough expertise for it. And it doesn't help that the subject of God in this franchise is much more complex and complicated because it changes throughout the different continuities. And what I wanted to do is to make one big research about the subject and wrap it up in just one video which would for sure go over one hour, but I don't think it would be wise and fair for your time, yes, even if some of you enjoy the videos of longer formats. And so I thought, might as well address subject per subject and discuss that thoroughly and with as much precision as possible. In the early stages of the franchise, the idea of humans being the ones who created the Digimon and the digital world was a prominent one, and as such, the very human that created the digital world was thought by some to be the god of the digital world. The four holy beasts who protect the digital world and govern its stability by representing each of the four cardinal points of the compass have also been subjects for debates. They were one of the first Digimon in history to attain the Mega Level and are thus seen as godly beings, but they are ruled over by Hanglungmon, also called the Emperor that rules the world. Is Hanglungmon God? Then you have Yggdrasil, the mysterious host computer that rules over the digital world, as well as being the system that manages the digital world. Considering its vast powers, can we call Yggdrasil the god who rules over all? At first I thought that it was the case, until I read about homeostasis and homerus, each of them being other security systems of the digital world, albeit one of them governing over another server, so that couldn't be it either. Besides, God as a concept is often associated with angels, and Yggdrasil has its own private army called the Royal Knights, a group of 13 mega-level Holy Knight Digimon that are the digital world's sacred guardians and are famed among Digimon as guardian deities of the computer network. They are each of them holy in their own rights, but they are not angels, aren't they? While the concept of God is and probably will remain complex in the Digimon franchise and quite frankly it will probably change depending on which continuity we are talking about, many Digimon continuities and stories do point out to one area, the kernel, also known as heaven or system world or also realm of God. See, the kernel is the core of the digital world and contains all information about it, both past and future and is referred to as God's territory with Angel Digimon protecting it and hiding it from anyone else being able to access it. The area has got to be kept hidden because rumors tell that if something goes wrong there, then the digital world in its whole will collapse. And it doesn't help to know that there are many Digimon out there with abilities so great and with intentions so dark, they would love to get their hands on that place, either for power or for knowledge. That is why the kernel is so heavily secured and that's also why no one can really access it. This place exists in a higher dimension to that of the digital world itself and all Angel Digimon come from there. All of them. From the Archangels like Magna Angelmon, who typically have 8 wings, which is a sign of their rank in the Digimon Angelic Hierarchy, and you have also lower ranking angels like Pidmon. And each member in the Digimon Angelic Hierarchy has a certain responsibility. To also really assure the protection of the kernel from outside threats, God also projected its sphere of influence via non-angelic beings, those who have never and probably never will get near the kernel. There is Sakuyamon and Kuzuhamon who both act as agents of God's will. Pharaohmon acted as God's first avatar during the genesis of the digital world and Shamamon took on the responsibility to listen to the will of God and convey the prophecies to its clan. There are many such examples of non-angelic beings who act under the influence of God. We will discuss them in their own video. Yggdrasil, who we mentioned earlier, has its own private army known as the Royal Knights, and they do whatever they are commanded. God has also its own private army, or maybe better said, the Colonel has its own private army called the Angelic Army, also known as Powers. They are a group of Digimon that are emissaries of the Colonel. They are a group that preserve the order of the digital world and each member has its own responsibility and free will. We'll take a look 
at all of them one by one, starting with the lowest in rank. Pidmon is the lowest angel Digimon as it only has two wings, but despite having the lowest rank, its powers must not be taken lightly. Its powers are on par with that of Angelmon, an angel Digimon who has six wings. Pidmon is a being of perfected virtue and one who destroys evil wielding its holy rod, and destroying evil is what it sure did. In the Digimon Adventure continuity it is said that in the past, some Pidmon were part of the angelic army, and a Pidmon was shown fighting a Devidramon, a demon beast with a personality that is the epitome of wickedness. It was summoned from the dark area otherwise known as the Abyss of Hell by the Messenger of Darkness. Darkmon is another low ranking angel Digimon but one with 4 wings instead of the 2 wings of Pidmon. Darkmon is inspired by and takes its name from the 15th century French herring Joan of Arc who fought for France in the Hundred Years War against England until the English burned her at the stake as a heretic. Joan of Arc was noted for her deep Christian piety and is now canonized as a saint of the Catholic Church, hence the angel theming of the Digimon. And just like Joan of Arc, Darkmon is as much a warrior. It is stationed as a vanguard soldier among angel Digimon and is referred to as the goddess of the battlefield, in reference to how it always rushed into battles while in the front lines. In the Digimon Frontier continuity, Darkmon affects a kind, caring personality who cries and laments the death of all under its command. It preaches a message of peace, decrying the violent actions of war. As events escalate, however, it urges its followers to fight in the name of peace. But what was weird is that it never actually took part to the fighting. That is because it was revealed that Darkmon wasn't quite itself. In fact, someone else took the appearance of Darkmon and used its authority to get closer to its goals. Myrmachismon, a demon lord Digimon who is part of the ruling class of the Nightmare Soldiers with the title of Count and it manages 30 legions of demons. Angelmon is another member of the Angelic Army and has 6 shining wings instead of the 4 that Darkmon has. And this angel is said to be a being of perfected virtue and although it is called a Digimon that brings happiness, when confronting evil, it does not stop attacking with extreme composure until the opponent is completely annihilated. Many Angelmon were sent from the heavens for various reasons. It can be because the digital world was visited by a crisis or it may have been to spread the light of virtue across the entire digital world. Some Angelmon did that well, others were killed in the process and some Angelmon surprisingly went astray. In the Digimon Cross Wars continuity, there is a sect called the Goddesses Warriors. It is a group consisting of members that worshipped a certain goddess. Only the statue remained though, and an Angelmon was said to be the leader of that sect. An Angelmon that was later on killed by an Ebimon, but it doesn't change the idea that despite being an angelic being, it still worshipped the statue of a woman which, by the way, looks exactly like a Bell Starmon but with a more angelic appearance. Bell Starmon is pretty much the female version of Beelzemon, another member of the Seven Demon Lords. In other words, Angelmon might pretty much have been worshipping the statue of a demon in disguise. As members of the Angelic Army, Pidomon, Angelmon and Darkmon are the lowest in rank. But inside the Angelic Army you also have two Archangels, each of which has eight wings. First, there is Magna Angelmon. Its mission is that of being the digital world's law enforcement officer and it is responsible for supervising and surveying the many angel Digimon. You would usually see Magna Angelmon in the shape of a priest when it tries to speak for the essence of light, trying to preserve the order of the digital world. However, when there is a danger and when the digital world is shrouded by the essence of darkness, it changes into its battle mode. The second archangel is Angel Woman a Digimon with the appearance of a beautiful woman. Although its personality is extremely gentle, it cannot forgive those who are crooked or evil. And because of the greatness of its abilities, it will fight and won't stay its hand from attacking until the opponent converts. Its soul and power made many believe that Angel Woman is like a goddess of the digital world. But despite the powers of Angel Woman and Magna Angelmon, they are still angels belonging to what is known as the third sphere, the lowest sphere a sphere consisting of a group of angelic Digimon who are ranked lowest in the angelic hierarchy. Pidmon, Darkmon and Angelmon 
also belonged to that sphere and belonged to those Digimon who made it into the Angelic Army. But there are other Angelic Digimon belonging to the third sphere who did not make it into the army. Archangel Bagramon, who once ruled over death, isn't a member, and for good reasons if you ask me, especially when you consider what it has done. Shakumon, a Digimon who worked for God during the genesis of the digital world, is also not a member, which is a bit of a bummer because it can radiate red laser beams from its eyes that can reach 100,000 degrees Celsius. Why it isn't a member has yet to be discovered, but you're always free to leave your comments in the comment section. And Archangel Lucimon, with its eight wings, just like Angel Woman, Magna Angelmon, and normally Bagramon, did also not make it into the army. And it is of no surprise. The Digimon is still a child. I'm wondering what it will do when it grows up. But in general, those who are in a lower sphere are commanded by one who is from a higher sphere. And the higher the sphere a Digimon is in, the more responsibilities it will have. The third sphere is meant for angel Digimon who will work as intermediaries between God and worldly beings. The second sphere acts as the hand of God in its universal plan, and one member of the second sphere commands the angelic army. First you have Clavis Angelmon, a virtual Digimon and a carrier of the Exentai body. Despite being a member of the second sphere, it is still a Digimon you will normally not see fighting in the front line because it has another responsibility, protecting the zenith gate between the digital world and the outside world. Only Clive's Angelmon knows how to use the key to open it. While it is a Digimon you will mostly see at the background, it does have powerful abilities which could pretty much give an edge to the Angelic army. It is one who has the ability to seal a target or its attacks and can also unseal a target if it so wishes. Clive's Angelmon along with the rest of the Angel Digimon and the Archangels inside the third sphere are commanded by the Authority Digimon slash Angelmon, otherwise known as Guardi Angelmon, in reference to the Guardian Angel. With its appearance that has been greatly enhanced by the presence of blades on its limbs and wings, it cuts through the vanguard in battle. The truth is that it was created in order to battle wicked beings, and as it persists in justice, it does not fear death. Slash Angelmon will probably have most chances at winning and will have more chances to guide the angelic army to victory because it won't just go to battle just like that. It can always get advice from Rachasilmon, an orphan Digimon of the first sphere who possesses the mysterious power to foresee everything in the world from the kernel and knows all about events throughout the digital world. Rachasilmon is also a member of the angelic army but I suspect it will probably only take on the mantle of advisor but if push really came to shove Slash Angelmon and Clavis Angelmon can always call on their ally Dominimon, a Dominion Digimon who isn't part of the Angelic Army and one who does not even answer in any way to the Angelic Chain of Command and instead acts on its own. However, when an especially threatening enemy appears, it will gladly join forces with Clavis Angelmon and Slash Angelmon. And the reason for its willingness to join forces has maybe something to do with the fact that it, in some way, longs for its own death. See, Dominion is a rare type that suddenly manifested via mutation when the balance between the light and darkness of the digital world was disrupted. And while it is almost never sighted, it values all life as collectively more important than its own. Dominion does not consider its own life especially important, which is why it dares to perform a death-defying attack without hesitation if truly needed. I like to refer to Dominion because it shows that the angelic army, while having core members, still can rely on other angels in case things took a turn for the worse. The Minimon can be called if necessary, but they can also call for the help of Lovely Angelmon, a warrior angel who descended to Earth with unknown purposes. All that is known is that it excels in close range combat and contains the data of magical fighters who engage in hand to hand combat. You see, a great civilization is easily conquered by outside forces when that same civilization was already destroyed from within. And I can tell you already that the Angelic Army and Angel Digimon in general are already destroyed from within. The Minimon is but an example of how Angel Digimon sometimes walk around with conflicting issues within themselves and some are sometimes even questioning their very existence. So, Dominimon shows that Angel Digimon are not just following orders without having a second thought, and maybe, just maybe, 
God tried to suppress all possibilities for Angel Digimon to succumb to temptation. That's why we theorized why all Angel Digimon have their eyes covered. Link towards the video is in the description box. It is that critical thinking that will push some Angel Digimon to, well, to fall from grace either via mistakes or simply by rebelling. And many of the Digimon that will turn their back against God were already mentioned. The Digimon Heavens were preparing for an imminent war with the Fallen Angel Digimon, which now exists by the many. Most if not all of them reside in the Dark Area, an area located within a spatial distortion of the digital world below the Dark Web, the deepest part of the Net Ocean. An area so chaotic that not even the Fallen Angel Digimon themselves truly govern that space. And there are other, more powerful entities out there who don't even fear the Fallen Angel Digimon. In light of the conflict between virtue and vice instigated by Lucimon, God apportioned its three aspects among three of its disciples, turning them into the three celestial Digimon and placed them in command of the army of the gods. First member is Cherubimon, the guardian of God and its wisdom. It also serves as the data bank that has custody of God's extensive knowledge. Second member is Ophanimon an angel Digimon with ten wings and considered to be the holy mother of the digital world and is the personification of God's deep love who imparts its loving and compassionate side. The final member, Seraphimon, another angel Digimon with ten wings, is the guardian of God's absolute justice and order and executor of the enlightened God's laws. It is the highest ranked angel and thus the ruler of all angel Digimon and is the one being closest to God. Which reminds me, Yggdrasil is also considered to be a god and has also a private army, the Royal Knights. The one being that is closest to Yggdrasil is not Seraphimon but instead Shakamon, the one that has protected the Eastern Digital World since ancient times. The three Archangels reign supreme at the apex of all Angel and Holy Digimon and are each considered to hold preeminent status among a certain subset of these Digimon. Seraphimon is the apex male Angel Digimon, Ophanimon is an icon of the female angel Digimon which exists by the many, like for example Archai Angemon, a principality new generation angel Digimon of equal rank to the likes of Magna Angemon and Angel Woman. Cherubimon is the culmination of the Holy Beast Digimon, and we have to stop by Cherubimon for a little while because there is a thing that must be said in terms of the heritage of power. You see, the battle against Lucimon happened in the distant past, in the ancient digital world and the angels weren't the only ones who were involved in the battle. Quite frankly, no matter how you look at it, the angels were in a disadvantage. Remember, many of them went corrupt and who could tell if one was going to turn their back. So the original 10 legendary warriors, also known as the ancient 10 warriors, who each represent the 10 elemental attributes, were also involved in this battle against Lucimon and they came out victorious. Eight of them did perish, but each member did pass on their elemental powers to specific Digimon types. Ancient Garurumon passed its light to Beast Digimon, Ancient Sphinxmon passed its darkness to Mythical Animal and Demon Beast Digimon, many of which reside in Hell, and Shirubimon, who is a Celestial Digimon, not one of the ten legendary warriors, is considered the culmination of Holy Beast Digimon, Digimon with a divine and holy heritage. And after the defeat of Lucimon, the power that it possessed was apportioned three ways among the three celestial angels and a period of peace ensued. The question is, how long can peace really last when you know that the members of God's army can still be corrupted and can still turn their backs against God? And how long can peace last in a universe that is mostly made out of data? Can you truly eliminate all traces and all data of a Digimon as powerful as Lucimon? Think about it, we discussed Apocalymon in a previous video and despite its destruction, only a bit of its data remained and that was enough to give birth to the fallen angel Mephistomon who would later on become Golfmon, one said to be capable of destroying the world in 7 days. Let me get into some details. The Digimon Frontier continuity showed us that peace sometimes can never last, yes even after a battle that could have destroyed the world as we know it. In that continuity, Seraphimon, Cherubimon and Ophanimon became the governors and protectors of the digital world following the defeat of their tyrannical predecessor Lucimon by the Warrior Ten, and for a time the Archangels kept the peace in the digital world. 
However, their working relationship was often rocky due to their backgrounds, as the group consisted of two human Digimons, Seraphimon and Ophanimon, but only one piece Digimon, Cherubimon. And Cherubimon often disagreed with the thinking of the other two and accused them of being unable to understand the perspective of the beast Digimon. Seraphimon and Ophanimon would sometimes have discussions about Cherubimon to try and understand its perspective, but on seeing them having such a conversation, Cherubimon immediately assumed that they were actually conspiring to work only for the benefit of the human Digimon. And in the shadows, from its imprisonment in the dark area, Lucimon exploited Cherubimon's suspicions and animosity towards the other two to corrupt it with an evil aura and used Cherubimon who was now in its vice mode as a pawn in its plot to escape. Cherubimon raised an army of beast Digimon against the human Digimon and launched an assault on Seraphimon's castle at Forest Terminal. During the attack, Seraphimon was grievously wounded and Ophanimon surrendered itself to protect Seraphimon from further harm. One event led to the other and both Ophanimon ended up being killed along with Seraphimon, all because of Cherubimon's doing as it was exploited obviously and it would also end up being killed itself later on. All that was needed was the exploitation of one weakness to cause the three strongest angels to fight against each other, to kill themselves and unwillingly awaken the dark demon dragon of the apocalypse, the true super demon lord and the dragon of the book of revelation, Lucimon Satan mode. A completely broken Digimon in terms of power and quite frankly, with my extensive Digimon knowledge, no Digimon can really defeat it and those who could have a chance are usually evil Digimon in nature. As we have said previously, Angel Digimon are beings of ultimate virtue, but as a consequence of that extremity, they are susceptible to being tainted by virtue's antithesis, vice. The three Archangels never were exceptions to the rule. If negative emotions sprout within an Archangel and tumefy as the days pass, they will cause any Angel to fall to darkness, becoming a fallen version of itself. However, there isn't only bad news here. It is said that in the event that an Archangel falls, a new Digimon will be chosen to succeed the fallen Archangel and will evolve and take its place. On top of that, the realm of Angels is also growing in members, each of which being in the possession of incredible powers. I mentioned Archai Angelmon before. It is an Archangel specializing in a defensive fighting style, and its superlative ingenuity allows it to act as both counselor and commanding officer of its assigned squad. While it rarely participates in battle, it can use a flaming maelstrom to summon its underlings Gargolmon, a Digimon who was originally a demon species Digimon but with powers that are now restrained, and Manticoremon, a demon beast Digimon that prefers consuming the Digicores of its own fellow virus Digimon brethren. Because it lacks in intelligence, there are times where even Archai Angelmon becomes unable to control it. Raguelmon is also another very important addition, its role is to observe all Angel Digimon with eyes of distrust, in order to prevent the fall of other Angel Digimon. The moment it detects an Angel Digimon that has begun to fall, it will attack and destroy them before they would have fallen completely. And there is another Angel Digimon that is the most unique out of the bunch, Mastemon, a tactician from another world. This one is particularly interesting, which is also why we discussed it in its own video. Mastemon is an angel Digimon of its own tier and quite frankly, it can't really be counted upon by angels. We must be talking about a very specified condition to summon Mastemon. To go deeper, there must have been an enemy so great, or we might yet receive the story of an enemy so dangerous that Mastemon will have to get involved in that battle. See, this angel can cross through space-time and controls the forces of angels and dark angels that are called through the gate from another digital world. When angels and demons have to unite, then that's when you know that the enemy really messed up and that is also when you know that the enemy is truly, truly way too powerful. Is there a Digimon in existence that can cause Mastemon to be summoned? In previous episodes, we discussed who the members in the Digimon Angelic Heaven were, along with their responsibilities and how everything is organized and structured up there. An important question, however, is what happens when a holy Digimon takes a separate path after being tempted either by the dark side or by simply going against the rules? There's lots that can happen to them. The first decision was to simply banish those Angel Digimon from the Kernel, the area where all Angel Digimon came from. 
In their banishment, some Angel Digimon, also known as Fallen Angel Digimon, would either fall in the dark area and be sealed there, and some other would simply fall in the digital world where most Digimon would live in. Now who am I to say that it was actually a bad decision for the heavens to banish angels? I guess it looked like the best decision at first, but the problem is that many of those banished ones ended up reorganizing themselves to either start a rebellion against God and the heavens, or they organized themselves to simply disrupt the order and bring chaos everywhere. And they are particularly good at bringing chaos. That is why Ruguelmon became a welcomed addition to the angelic pantheon. It came as the second measure to deal with angels who start to fall. Its function is to keep a keen eye on angel Digimon who start to rebel, who start to fall. The moment it detects an angel Digimon that has begun to fall, it will attack and destroy them before they would even have fallen completely. But I've got a few questions here. Who are those fallen angel Digimon? A question we must ask ourselves because many of those demons residing in the dark area were in fact angels. Sometimes high ranking angels. What caused some of those angel Digimon to fall from grace, and what happened to them after being exiled? We're going to discuss all of that here. When we take into account the various Digimon continuities, the first ones who rebelled against the Digimon heavens were either Bagramon or Lucimon, and in some storylines, their stories sort of intertwined. But overall, it is quite a challenge to put them on one and a similar timeline, which makes it quite hard to make one story out of it. But I believe it will be much easier for you, the viewers, if I start explaining Bagramon first. You see, Bagramon was originally a high-ranking angel Digimon that ruled over death. It was an angel of the third sphere, meaning that it was an intermediary between God and worldly beings. In its character profile, it is written that it despaired against the unreasonable justice of the world and rebelled against God and was therefore banished from the heavens. The Digimon Cross Wars continuity added another twist to it. In that storyline, Bagramon was banished after questioning homeostasis about the existence of evil in the world and challenging God. Very important to know and to avoid confusion for new viewers or those who try to get into the Digimon series, Homeostasis is a digital entity meant to take care of the digital world after Yggdrasil, the first host computer who ruled over the digital world on one of the servers on the network, had gone berserk in the past and attempted to destroy the human world. So Homeostasis was created as a response to that, to work as Yggdrasil's successor and to be more calm and protective god. Homeostasis being the new host computer basically means that we are in a different timeline of the one where you had the royal knights who served Yggdrasil. I say different because there is a timeline where Yggdrasil launched the X program and basically killed the majority of Digimon and began the, what I call, the X timeline, where the Digimon who reached the new worlds were carriers of the X and Die body, and they always have the letter X behind their names. But that's another timeline. When we talk about Bagramon rebelling against homeostasis, it means that Yggdrasil, who was protected by the royal knights, either was killed, or maybe it killed itself, we don't know. And it is its royal knights who have a natural rivalry with the seven demon lords, who are led by another fallen angel Digimon called Lucimon. And here's the problem, when Bagramon rebelled against God, depending on the continuity, it did interact with Lucimon first. See, in the Digimon Cross Wars manga, Bagramon was banished from the heavens and received the Scourge of God and eternally lost one of its eyes and half of its body that was burned by God's lightning. That part has since been replaced by an artificial body cut from a sacred ash tree, which was basically the remains of the server tree of Yggdrasil. It then started the Bagra army in order to destroy the world it thought was built wrong and to give a merciful end to the humans whose hearts it saw as something fallen into despair with no chance of recovery. And you know what? Although Bagramon's sins would have been forgiven if it repented before God, Bagramon simply did not want to go back to submission under God. This is because it still seeks to replace the unreasonable justice of the world that God constructed and its goal in life is to banish God from the world with its new justice. At some point, before the warfare that was started by Bagramon, it asked Lucimon for help, but Lucimon refused. It remained neutral and simply took the position of observer to see the consequences of Bagramon's plan, which failed, resulting in the death or deletion of Bagramon. 
To give you a bit more details, Baggermon went to the dark area to build its army and tried to recruit the seven great demon lords to its cause. Lucimon, Babamon, Demon and Billsmon refused. Only Lilithmon accepted, abandoning its old group and assuming the post of Baggermon's general. It is heavily implied that the reason for the refusal was that they had just recently lost Belfimon and Leviamon, the two having been killed by the royal knights who feared the dragon of homeostasis' prophecies. Which brings us to Lucimon, an angel Digimon with a grand total of 12 wings, despite still being one with the appearance of a child, and one who is at the rookie level. See, Lucimon descended to the ancient digital world long ago, back when it was still presumably governed by Yggdrasil, to bring order and harmony. It had the power to do that when you consider the number of its wings and the holy rings it carries, which greatly enhanced its powers. However, a long period of darkness was summoned due to Lucimon's later rebellion. It became corrupted and tried to order all Digimon to obey it. And so the ten legendary warriors were summoned and fought alongside angels to stop the rebellion. While Lucimon was successfully sealed in the dark area, only two of the ten legendary warriors survived its crusade, meaning ancient Garurumon and ancient Greymon, who managed to seal away Lucimon. And now, while being sealed away in the dark area, it is still alive with some remaining influence up there in the heavens, but it is mostly waiting for an opportunity to get unsealed. And in the dark area, it became the demon lord representing the sin of pride. So again, you can't really put Lucimon's rebellion in the same timeline as that of Bagramon, as in Bagramon's timeline, Yggdrasil pretty much is dead, and the royal knights may be even disbanded while Lucimon's rebellion happened in the distant past against the ancient legendary warriors. Maybe I'm stretching this too much, but as it is said that Lucimon is a being that rivals the existence called God, maybe Lucimon is also omnipresent across the various timelines. That's how it could make sense, but that's just a stretch. The Digimon writers have made countless stories in various timelines with the same Digimon. Anyway, Lucimon was defeated and God came to the conclusion that you couldn't have an angel hold so much powers. So Lucimon's abilities have now been inherited and split among the three celestial Digimon, each of which also fell from grace. But we will get to their stories in a minute. There's still a thing or two that must be said about Lucimon. There are basically two roads Lucimon has taken, depending on the stories, despite being out there in the dark area. The first story is that of Lucimon being able to influence Cherubimon to turn it against Seraphimon and Ophanimon ultimately causing the demise of all three and the revival of Lucimon, but in its Satan mode. Quite frankly, it is impossible to take down Lucimon while well in this form because depending on the continuity, it came to be by absorbing the entirety of the dark area, or basically the entirety of hell, which it now holds in its hands, but in a miniature version. And I presume all devils and demons in it were absorbed. There is no attack that can harm it, as the attack would simply get absorbed by the orb, which is also called Gehenna. So that is one direction Lucimon took. The other road is that of coming together with its six other colleagues, the other demon lords, and combine all their powers by fusing into one being called Ogudumon, a grotesque super demon lord with seven legs and eight eyes. While in this form, as it represents the totality of the digital world since, if a Digimon even has the smallest amount of malice, it will be impossible to do anything to defeat Ogudumon. So all in all, the roads Lucimon end up taking will make it grow into beings that are practically impossible to defeat, at least when you consider their descriptions. And this is also what I tend to find very interesting in Digimon and actually other mangas, sometimes they make the villains so powerful that even the writers have no ways to kill those villains in a way that would make sense. You had it in Naruto with Madara Uchiha and you have it here with Lucimon either in its Satan mode or when it fuses to become Ogudumon. Anyway, the Digimon Heavens decided to divide Lucimon's powers and give it to the Celestial Digimon, each of which ended up finding its way to the dark side. We'll take a look at all of them and we'll start with Seraphimon. Seraphimon's role is that of being the executor of God's laws and it rules over all Angel Digimon. And its true identity and personality are hidden behind a mask and cannot be glimpsed, so you can't really know how it thinks. However, its falling from grace happened in basically two stages. 
First, it became a shadow Seraphimon, who only took this form because of its concealed inner resentment, which tummified and made it engulf in darkness. So it raged in fury or rebellion against God. If this form, if this condition persists for long, and if it isn't killed by Raguelmon, then it will fall to a demon, one of the seven demon lords representing the sin of wrath. So, Obviously, it would be deleted from the heavens and end up finding its way in the dark area, except that in that place, it ended up occupying a same leadership role as Seraphimon. Over there, it leads the many devil and fallen angel Digimon, and it has vowed to one day conquer the digital world in revenge against God. And one way of doing that is by plotting to secretly revive Lucimon after it was sealed in its rebellion. Oh, Phanimon is another celestial Digimon who imparts the loving side of God, except that there is a part in it that is quite ruthless. For example, it was responsible for banishing the former angel species Shohakaimon from heaven for an unspecified crime. That is why it was given the appearance of a woman in a pig suit. Now, just for your information, Shohakaimon's banishment is not one which pushed it to get into the dark area. And now, it wants to change its ferocious personality by seeking to reform itself by going on a journey where it came into contact with another fallen angel Digimon, Shaojamon. No one knows how it fell from the heavens, no one knows what it did. What is known is that it went into a journey after its banishment along with Shohakaimon, Sanzumon and Gokumon and together they would end their journey by fusing to become Shakamon the protector of the Eastern Digital World since ancient times. We talked about it thoroughly in explaining Shakamon Digivolution Line video, make sure to check it out if you haven't already. As Shakamon is a being replete with love, so is Ophanimon, but one Ophanimon turned so angry that it suppressed its own emotions and fell into madness, making it turn into its fall down mode. It became like that as it swelled with anger at the world where atrocious sins keep mounting no matter how many times they are purged. And so it closed off its heart, and in this form it hunts whichever opponent it has judged to have become a barrier to justice and tries to establish a world of what it recognizes as justice. An Ophanimon who further falls from grace will turn into Lilithmon, otherwise known as Leilamon, a demon lord who represents the sin of lust. And in this form, it confounds its opponents with its bewitchingly lovely appearance and it is said that those who are taken in by its temptations are invariably granted death. And just like that, Lilithmon offers great generosity towards anything that involves vice and will have cruel outrages towards virtue. And speaking of vice and virtue, Cherubimon is the third celestial being whose duty is to defend the Digital World's kernel, otherwise known as the Digital World's databank. What I like about Cherubimon a lot is that, despite it being a celestial being in the form of a beast, it is really close to God, just like Seraphimon. See, I told you previously that Bagramon's other half of its body was burned by God's lightning, right? Well, Cherubimon is one who only fights using lightning, and the strike is thought to be divine punishment. It might even be that it was Cherubimon who burned Bagramon's other half, but in the name of God. Anyway, Cherubimon can also become corrupted and become a dark variant of itself, a vice variant, instead of the virtuous version we all know. In its vice mode, you can pretty much say that it became a Digimon whose soul belongs entirely to the dark area. But not to become a part of the seven demon lords. In fact, its story has yet to be written. What we did on the other hand is theorize that it could become a member of the new seven demon lords. If you haven't seen the video yet, make sure to click on the link in the description box. Then there is also Raguelmon, the one who observes old angel Digimon in order to prevent them to fall or to make other angel Digimon fall. It is in and of itself also an angel who fell. See, Raguelmon was shunned for its role as an observer for unknown reasons. That is why it became a fallen angel Digimon and Raguelmon is one who really didn't take its fall well. It began to be filled with nihilistic thoughts until its sole line of thought was to reject everything. At this stage in its life, it no longer discerns between friend and foe, turning into a fearsome Digimon that carries out destruction indiscriminately.
Raguelmon's story actually continues. See, there is another Ophanimon whose role was to maintain order that fell from grace due to its wrath and sorrow. It came across a Raguelmon and both fused to give birth to Ordinemon, a fallen angel Digimon that is extremely mysterious as the truth about it is still unclear. But it has been theorized by a portion of researchers that Ordinemon would appear when the digital world has been plunged into chaos and is meeting its end. Except that Ordinemon might not appear to help because negative emotions themselves flow out of Ordinemon's wings and a flap of its wings will spread miasma throughout its surroundings. The endlessly overflowing miasma is capable of eventually covering the entire world, resulting in the end of all life. Also, I said that Ordinemon might not appear to help because while its true nature is one of kindness and is a high standing being who plans to save the world, its plan is to first return the world which has lost its order to nothingness. Magna Angemon, despite being a law enforcement officer, a surveyor and a priest was also one to succumb to darkness itself. You see, in the Digimon Next manga, we get the story of Barbamon, a demon lord representing the sin of greed and actually another colleague of Lucimon. In this story, Barbamon managed to take over the host computer Yggdrasil and it aims to take over the digital world. With that purpose, it created the Commandments. They are essentially Barbamon's army who has three commanders. Zanbamon, a demon man Digimon who reigns as the general of the Moshiamon Corps. Chaos Dramon, who is an enhanced machine Dramon with a body made entirely of red Digizoid, and Myrmecusmon, and it is on this Digimon that we are going to be focusing on. See, Myrmecusmon is in the ruling class of the Nightmare Soldiers and manages legions of demons, but what is sometimes not known is that it was originally a high-ranking angel Digimon who fell from grace and became a Demon Lord Digimon. In the past, it turns out Myrmecusmon was actually a Magna Angemon charged with protecting Yggdrasil. One day, it found a Demi-Vemon which had been abandoned by its tamer, and after coming to care for it, the Demi-Vemon still died without its tamer's love. So Babamon, also called the Schemer of Gold, and one who can easily manipulate fallen angel Digimon, then came and used those feelings of hatred towards humans to twist Magna Angemon to turn into Myrmecusmon. So it is crazy how much power and influence Barbamon has, and yet its victims were not limited only to Magna Angemon. See, there is a Digimon that we haven't seen with an angelic form yet, if it even has one, but it is one who was originally a high-ranking angel Digimon, Ghoulmon, otherwise known as Deathmon, the three-eyed god of destruction who originally has a white greyish color. See. In the Digimon Adventure continuity, Deathmon was first briefly seen during the Ancient War where the Holy Digimon fought against the Dark Digimon, and its positioning was quite questionable. And according to Wisemon's records, the War of Light and Darkness actually started when Deathmon attacked, and it was a mystery why Deathmon wanted to destroy Darkness despite belonging in it. So, it is a fallen angel Digimon who resides in the dark area and contrary to other fallen angel Digimon and devil Digimon, it does not run the whole gamut of wickedness, but instead does its utmost to carefully maintain a position of neutrality. But despite this, it was easily manipulated by Barbamon, the cunning one. And it is told that at the time of the approaching final battle, that whitened appearance will change to jet black darkness and it will transform into a god of destruction. So, its story and relation with the colonel is quite a mystery, but with the small information we have, we now know that its role is important. And you know what? Deathmon, with its three eyes, is somewhat seen as an omen of the great catastrophe, the face of the disaster that drives the world mad. That great catastrophe is a reference to a mysterious Digimon called Negamon, one who is characterized by its large mouth and teeth and ominous body. When this Digimon digivolves, it becomes Abaddon, an unknown species. And just for your information, the name Abaddon comes from the Bible and is described as both a place of destruction as well as an archangel of the abyss. It is said that the birth of Abaddon is undoubtedly a crisis for the entire digital world and it is conjectured that some digital worlds from other dimensions have been annihilated by it. You can basically see Abaddon as one who transcends good and evil and simply is a menace to everything, good or bad. 
And considering its background profile which tells it is basically a multiversal threat, you could also put it to the list of Digimon that simply cannot be defeated and are outright broken. How can one even defeat an enemy whose raison d'être is to seek and to prefer nothingness and rejects everything except nothingness and after it turns everything into nothingness it disappears itself fulfilling its purpose? It might be a stretch but one way to defeat Abadomon is by getting the help of Angel Woman. Let me explain why and how. See, the Archangel Angel Woman, when it falls from heaven, is rumored to become a Lady Devimon, a fallen angel Digimon with a noble presence. Because of its strength, due to the incomparable purity of its dark side power, it is said that the limits on its spread and growth on personal computers is zero. And despite Angel Woman and Lady Devimon's natural rivalry, it is said that when the digital world was once visited by an unprecedented crisis, they both stopped their conflict with each other and fused to become Mastemon, a powerful angel who unifies both dark and holy families. An angel that can freely manipulate the energies of light and darkness, and very important, it is an angel and in fact, the only angel that can open time-space portals to let the forces of angel and fallen angel from another digital world come through. If it will suffice to defeat, Abadomon remains a mystery, but it will without a doubt become the best chance they would have. Then there is Angelmon, an angel Digimon known to bring happiness and considered a being of perfected virtue. It is also one who can be won over by the dark side. And it took two paths. There's one version of an Angelmon who was lured by Demi Devimon, a Digimon not known for its strength but one who is cunning enough to at least bring temptation in the mind of angel Digimon. And just like that, an Angelmon became a Devimon, who also gained a fiendish and cunning personality just like Demi Devimon and it gains the possession of an outstanding intellect, which explains why it was the main antagonist multiple times. And it did say something very interesting. Devimon said that as long as Angelmon exists, it can always revive, making it virtually indestructible. And this rule actually applies to all other fallen angel Digimon. There's also another Angelmon who grew a heart so cold, in fact, a heart as cold as ice, that it became Ice Devimon, another form of Devimon but one with the cruelest of hearts. It specializes in deceiving its enemy with its silver tongue and gains the mastery of ice. There are two other Digimon I need to mention because they are quite odd. See, we all know what a fallen angel is by now. They are Digimon who originally lived in the kernel but who were banished from it. But some Digimon in the dark area, in some way or another, were born immediately as fallen angel Digimon without ever having set foot in the kernel. Mephismon is one example, a Digimon born from the lingering thought data of an Apocalymon that attempted to destroy all life. And now, as a Mephismon, its sole purpose, its governing principle, is also the extermination of all life. There's no history of it ever having set foot in the kernel, but there's also no record of it falling from grace. It is simply born as a fallen angel Digimon. The story of its Digivolution, Golfmon, is a little bit different. It is not considered a fallen angel Digimon and yet it has the wings of angels. It is almost as if they were sort of mocking the Digimon Angelic Pantheon. If that was the point, then I must say that I'm quite impressed. And to finish, there's also Felismon, a Digimon who grants someone's desire, but in exchange it will snatch away their soul. It is also a fallen angel Digimon who, as far as we know, never set foot in the kernel, and yet it is deemed a fallen angel Digimon. This is interesting because if we know where Fallen Angel came to be, what caused Felismon and Mephismon to be seen as Fallen Angel Digimon? I just remember that there is also Skull Satamon and this one is a bit of a question mark too. See, Skull Satamon was once an angel living in the kernel, but it wasn't specified of which circle it belonged to. We don't know if it belonged to the third or second sphere. It did fall from heaven when it pursued strength and destruction, and now it gained an appearance that was once a ruin of what it once was. It also gained in wickedness up to a point that its dark powers became even more unfathomable. 
Now, I'd have to stop for a moment with Skull Satamon and put it next to Lucimon because Lucimon, being the digital reincarnation of Lucifer and Skull Satamon being the reincarnation of Satan, aren't they both the same? That was the question I asked myself many times, but it turns out that Satan and Lucifer are the same and yet they are not. It all depends on the context. I should probably make a separate video about it, but I'll try to explain briefly what the difference between both Lucifer and Satan is, and we will relate it back to their Digimon counterparts. So there are those that see Satan, Lucifer and the Antichrist as being three separate people, as well as one singular person. This is sometimes referred to as the Unholy Trinity, a reversal and mockery of the Trinity of God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, in Revelations, we read, Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they did not prevail, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent who is called the devil, and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. Satan is referred to as a huge serpentine dragon in this context, yet when we take a look at the terminologies of both Satan and Lucifer, you can learn the following. So the word Satan is used in the Hebrew Bible, in the book of Job, to describe a figure who accuses, that is, a figure who seems to present legal cases to God. And the term Lucifer means the light bearer, that is, the morning star. There's a passage in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, that describes a king who falls from power because he imagines himself as essentially divine. And you know what? Often, divine kings would describe themselves as the sun, or some star, or the incarnation of a particular god. And over time, this passage is interpreted as the way that a particular angel, because of pride, falls from heaven. So again, I should maybe make an entire video about it, but at least it somewhat gives an answer to the question on whether Skull Satamon could be Lucimon. Depending on what context, it may be that Lucifer and Satan are separate beings, and in some they are the same, but in the Digimon franchise they have been treated as separate Digimon, with different stories and very few links to each other aside maybe of being Fallen Angels Digimon. Hello my good friends, I hope you all enjoyed the video. This is pretty much a complete summary of everything which involves the Digimon Angelic Hierarchy, what pretty much happened there with each individual angel and how they fell from grace. We also discussed how those who fell from grace further developed. So this is pretty much the complete story. If you have anything to add, feel free to write it down in the comment section. And in case you are new, please make sure to subscribe and to drop a like to help the channel face the YouTube algorithm and know that all videos are placed in different Digimon playlists which are always updated, that way you can catch up on newer and older videos.